starts Wednesday. I repeat, conference tournament starts Wednesday. Yeah, but baseball is in full swing. We've got tons of that action coming up. And we bring you Kentucky Freck basketball action. All that and more coming up on The Extra Point. let you on set. Will, please. They needed the beauty on the set for tonight. Well, this is the Extra Point. I'm Will Puckett. She's Karen Iser. Let's go. Well, let's get this out of the way. If we haven't made it clear, let me do that right now. This is not WKU's year when it comes to men's basketball. Rick Stansberry and company have had a rough go of it, and this weekend wasn't much different. After winning by two earlier in the year, Stansberry and company went to Charlotte looking to sweep the season series. A ferocious 14-point comeback would fall short for the Tops, dropping them to 7-8 and eight in conference play with only three games remaining until conference tournament time with a loss, 83-77. Okay, so now we're two days removed from the Charlotte loss, and Rick Stansberry and company look to pull back even in conference at Old Dominion. The men lost earlier in the season to ODU in Diddle, 79-67. I hate to bring last year's tournament back into the conversation, but let's not forget the 42 points Trey Freeman dropped on the Tops a season ago so there's no love lost in this rivalry. The Tops would trail by as much as 17 in the game as they never led. Not once, not for a single second, 0, 0.0 seconds of time led in the game. And the scoreboard would show as they lost 67 to 53. So now the Tops sit two games under 500 in conference with only two games left to play. Tonight, the Tops host the last team in conference, the only team not going to Birmingham in the North Texas Main Green. Saturday, the Hilltoppers will host the final game at home for Ben Lawson, Anton Waters, and the three grad transfers in La Mamba, Thomas, and Johnson. Saturday against Rice starts at 640 with senior night, and at halftime, WKU Athletics will honor the Ransdells for their 20 years of service to the university. Uh, neither game will be easy. It'll be a challenge for us both nights, but play well, you know, and, and the thing, you know, play, play with more consistency for 40 minutes. Uh, we've played hard those last two games, just didn't do it long enough, or shouldn't say hard long enough, good enough long enough. Now everyone has a different way of handling adversity. For two WKU basketball players, their tattoos are their way of handling it. Will has more. The basketball court is a place you can find a lot of tattoos, but for two Hilltoppers, their tattoos are more than just skin deep. Usually when I get my tattoos, it's usually like a phase in my life when I'm going through a lot. So like when I get the tattoos, like the pain of getting a tattoo, like makes the, the pain in a, 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 of like reality numb. For WKU basketball players, Pancake Thomas and Justin Johnson, the artwork on their bodies isn't for show. Each tattoo placed carefully about their body is an ode to a part of their life they want to remember forever. It's something fun for me, you know. Uh, everybody's like, oh, you're going to regret it down the line. I don't think I ever will. I'll look in the mirror, and all of them have a meaning. Both Pancake and Justin got their first tattoos around the age of 18, and both first pieces center around the game of basketball. The first one I ever got on my chest is a pretty cool piece. Um, it's a basketball, and it looks like it's coming out of my skin, and it has chains over it and a lock, and on the lock it says, lock it says uh, Philippians 413. Actually, the first tattoo I, I got it with my high school team, like uh, after we won the state championship in like March of my senior year, everybody on the team got like state champions tatted somewhere on them. And that was my first tattoo. I got it like on my ring finger. For the two players, their favorites aren't the first ones. They're two or three pieces of artwork that either represent something they won't tell us about or something that's a driving force on and off the court. My LIF tattoo and my GFB tattoo. Uh, the GFB tattoo, it's a God family in basketball, and then the LIF tat. I can't tell anyone what the letters mean, but yeah, that's my favorite too, because they mean the most to me. One of the biggest influences in my life was my grandma, and uh, she passed away uh, a couple years back, and she used to sit at her coffee table every morning and uh, drink, drink her coffee and look outside and watch her hummingbird feeders. So I have a hummingbird tattooed here with her birthday. 
When asked if either thinks they'll ever regret their tattoos, a simple smile and no was the response. Reporting, Will Puckett, The Extra Point. Pancake has plans to get another tattoo for his time here in BG, and Justin is brainstorming his next one. But enough with the men. Women's basketball was back home last week against the Charlotte 49ers. A battle of seconds, just like the last meeting, only the last time was a Charlotte victory. So Michelle Clark heard and her squad knew what needed to be done this go around in the first. Now in the first half, one point, WKU was down by 13. But in the second, a new team arrived on the court. The shots began to fall for WKU and they began to pull away. But with a tough and determined Charlotte team, they did come within one. And they set senior Micah Jones to the line. She misses. They set up at half court with 1.8 seconds remaining. Now, that attempt was no good. The Lady Tops clinched the victory of 75 to 74. But hey, coach, what do you think about that one? Just was proud of how we just kept grinding and, you know, uh, not panicking. Uh, and again, you know, it was a great ball game. Shot could have went in, and I felt like both teams played well. We we played hard to come back and, and do the things, and then they made another run and came back. And after the Charlotte win under their belt, up next for the ladies in red was Old Dominion. Our Dalton Godby has the recap. Here in EA Dill Arena, I'm Dalton Godby for this edition of the Extra Points Report from the Court. Tonight, three seniors played their final home game here on the WKU campus. Kendall Noble, Ima Akpon, and Micah Jones. The tops were never really in question throughout the entire game. However, the Monarchs did keep it close, but Kendall Noble and Micah Jones' performance made sure that they take this victory home tonight. Micah Jones had 21 points, hitting six three-pointers tonight, and Kendall Noble added 18 points of her own. Both seniors said in the post-game press conference that they wanted to make sure they won this game, and they did just that. Yeah, it's super special. You know, that would have kind of ruined the day if we would have lost. But, um, yeah, our teammates played hard for us, and, you know, we got the win, and now we can celebrate. We didn't really think about it during the game, and I thought we played hard and played together, and then we focused on celebrating after, so it was a good day. Well, you know, this is definitely a bittersweet time, I think, for all of us. I'm just really excited. We figured out a way to get the win so they could uh, finish out here in style. An emotional day here on the hill for all these seniors, but – it ended on a high note as WKU cruised to a victory over Old Dominion 79 to 73 on some excellent senior performances. For the Extra Point, I'm Dalton Godby. All right, thanks Dalton. Now, Will, with the weekend coming up, what's it looking like for the women? Okay, now that Karen has caught y'all up, I'll bring you 100% to date. The ladies have to do, the ladies had to do a Texas two-step in the Lone Star State as they traveled to North Texas in Rice. MCH and companies sit at 14 and 2 in conference, which puts them atop Conference USA. So if the ladies win out, they stay number one. If they split the weekend, they stay number one. However, if they drop both tonight's game and Saturday's game, and MTSU wins both of their weekend games, they'll drop to second in conference. So this weekend isn't just pancakes and lollipop for the lady tops. It's going to be two tough games for us, so two different uh, type games, but also ready for us to just be able to do the things that we need to to figure out where we have to be to be able to win. You know, we're right now this week we're playing for a regular season championship, so we're, throughout the game we're just going to keep, you know, playing hard because we want that so bad, and it's, it's always in the back of your mind that that's a, the stake that you're playing for. So. Now, if you've watched a second of Lady Tops ball this year, you know about Kendall Noble and Micah Jones. Our Marcus Browning brings us the impact the two of them have had on Lady Topper basketball. Over the course of the last five years, a lot has happened for the Lady Topper basketball program. From one and done outings in the Conference USA tournament, to bids to the big dance. Two pieces have stayed the same during that time span. That's Micah Jones and Kendall Noble. Uh, you know, especially uh, Kendall and Micah, you know, this is a pretty emotional time for me because when I first got this job and we were, we were pretty low as a program, and just watching what they've done and uh, how they've elevated this program. Five years ago, Micah Jones and Kittle Noble signed up to play for newly hired head coach Michelle Clark Hurd. Now looking back, they couldn't be happier with the impact they had on the court behind me. Uh, when you say 100, they've been involved in 124 wins. It's a lot of wins. And uh, so just really proud that we could finish out this way. Uh, and I'm just humbled and honored as a coach.
to have an opportunity to be able to coach young ladies like that. Like I said, I just want people to know that, you know, we put our whole heart into everything we did. And, you know, I mean, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> on that course. I just hope people look at both of us and just know that we gave our all and, you know, being a good teammate and always and always working hard. And I think that's what we've done for the five years that we've been here. While the duo has experienced great success during their time on the Hill, that's not the only thing that's made the time worth it. It was great, you know, she's my best friend and we've been through this together, you know, long five years and it's been tough, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but we wouldn't trade it for the world and, you know, I'm glad we got to go out together. You know, she's always there for me and try to always be there for her and to see her do well and I hope we finish the year out strong and I, never, I don't want it to end, but when it does, I want to be on top. Reporting, Marcus Browning, The Extra Point. As Karen told you, the ladies sent their final home game out in style 79-73 to over Old Dominion as the two combined for 39 points. Now, Karen, it's only appropriate that we name our heroes on the hill after that story. You're right, Will, with the women having senior day a week ago and the men this Saturday, it's only right. So will Ben Lawson, Antoine Waters, Junior LaMamba, Hugh Johnson, and Pancake Thomas please rise? Yes, and Emma Ackpin, Kendall Noble, and Micah Jones, also you eight, are this week's Hero on the Hill. Now, heroes in every sense of the word. The men for picking this program up when it was down. And the women for bringing the program to five 20-win seasons in a row. So you own that spot at the top of the hill. Well, Will, we've made it through A block, but... What happens when you mix an eighth grader with some seniors? But I bet you'll tell us more. Yeah, I will, but not before we go with Matt here in studio to talk some more hoops. I realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel coming to my door as someone who's housebound assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell, America. Let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Thanks for staying with us. Now we can't move any further without getting some more details about next week for the basketball teams. We've got Matthew Stewart right here in the studio to give us the insight. Matthew? What's going on, Karen? Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us. Now, Matthew, I'm going to start this one off. Just kind of tell us what we're looking at heading into conference tournament next Wednesday. Will, as you know, the team heads down to Birmingham next Wednesday to start off the Conference USA tournament. But tonight they take on uh, North Texas here in Diddle, and then they take on Rice uh, for senior night on Saturday. So they have to win both of those games if they want to be seated in a, in a game where they don't take off, take off against Middle Tennessee. Right, Matthew. So really – who are the key players that are going to help with this team in the conference? Absolutely, it's going to be junior forward Justin Johnson. In the second half of the season, he's been averaging a double-double. But you also have to look at both fifth-year seniors, Pancake Thomas and Q Johnson. Those guys make shots for WKU, and in order for them to be successful, we need 20-point nights from those guys if they want to win a game. 
Now, Matthew, you talk about trying to get a better seed so you don't face off against middle on, in the first or second round. Hilltoppers sit ninth. What do they have to do to get to that seventh seed to, fa to not face middle? Well, right now, the eight or the nine, whichever one moves on in Conference USA, they're going to face off against the conference frontrunner in the Blue Raiders. So the tops need to win two games, and some other teams around the league also need to fall in order for the tops to have a chance to play four games in four days. It's something that the tops have done before, but it's a tough task. I mean, you got to think you're playing four games back to back to back. It's, it's tough. All right. Well, thank you, Matthew, so much for joining us. But we got to move to the diamond now. The baseball team faced off against Lipscomb on Tuesday. The outing marked the first game back for redshirt freshman Caleb Bruner. The pitcher suffered a season-ending injury in the 2016 campaign. But he made his appearance against the Bison, and Bruner allowed only two hits to start the game, but responded with only one hit coming in the second. Then none until the fifth. Now on the bat, the Hilltoppers were silenced until the fourth and didn't seem to get the momentum going. They fell 10 to four. I'm very proud of him. I, I was excited to have him get a chance to go out there. He's worked extremely hard coming off of an injury. And um, I know he had a little nervousness out there, but uh, once he settled in, I thought he did a good job and we'll continue to run him out there and he'll do a good job for us. It was rocky at first, but then as I got through the first inning, it, it it got easier, that's for sure. My arm felt great, so I'm just, I'm just glad to be back contributing to the team. All right, now last night the Hilltoppers made their way to Lexington to take on the University of Kentucky. KBKU loaded the bases in the first, but a line drive to left field sent them back to the dugout. UK responded the next two innings and jumped ahead with a 10-0 lead. Now the highlight for the game came from the tops in the sixth from Kevin Lambert with a career first home run over the left field fence. But despite their best efforts, the tops fell to the Wildcats 17-2. Now up next for Pulowski and company, they are set to face Ohio University for a weekend series at the Nick. Coming off two straight losses, the Hilltoppers will look to respond. The Bobcats started their season 5-4, and four, but they are coming off a loss to Alabama State. Whereas WKU is sitting at 3-6 and six on their season, and their first game of the series will begin tomorrow at 3. The Lady Toppers softball spring fling wrapped up this weekend, and man, was it nice for the Lady Tops. The women would go 4-1 and one on the weekend, scoring a total of 34 runs, beating Indiana State, Illinois State, IUPUI, and Wright State, only allowing eight runs in all four games. The final match against Austin P would end in a 10-6 loss for the Tops, but hey, the ladies were just exhausted from winning so much earlier in the weekend. Now after a whole week off, the ladies head south for the Courtyard Marriott Tournament in Norman, Oklahoma. The ladies will take on Northwestern State and the University of Evansville tomorrow and Oklahoma University on Saturday. The ladies will have another game on Saturday and one on Sunday. However, those opponents are yet to be determined. The WKU Athletics family has lost another member. Former Hilltopper football coach Lawrence Butch Gilbert passed away early Monday. Gilbert was part of the Hilltopper football team in the 40s and served on longtime coach Jimmy Fikes' staff. When Jack Harbaugh took over the program in the late 90s, Gilbert came out of retirement and coached kickers and special teams for two years. Butch Gilbert was 87. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. But I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can. Get someone the cab. Or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends. Our roommates. Our, our classmates, classmates. Our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We can. Intervene. It's on us. All of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there.
I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Welcome back. Now, much to your all chagrin, basketball season is coming to an end. However, Greenwood and Bowling Green for the District 14 championship, and it was all BG. Eighth grader Zion Harmon led the Purples with 24 points. However, teammate Terry Taylor was right behind him with 22 of his own. The Purples had four boys with double-digit scores in the game. The Purples rolled to an easy 89-48 victory over the Dragons. Hey, Coach Cheryl, how do you feel about your boys' chances in the state tournament? And we just want to keep money, putting money in the bank, keep investing in who we are, try to keep fighting, moving forward, knowing that we're going to get everybody's best shot. But uh, we also know that, you know, while we're getting everybody's best shot, somebody's going to have to come beat us now. They're going to take it from us. Not saying it can't be done, but we're going we're to fight with everything we have to try to keep this thing going. Now, staying with the color purple and that Zion Harmon kid, the rest of his team and himself took on Barron County Tuesday night. In fourth region play, the purples got to going and they couldn't be stopped. Harmon and Taylor would both combine for 34. The Purples led 52-42, entering the fourth stanchion of play. Bowling Green would force the Trojans into five turnovers in the fourth and only allowed three points in the final eight minutes, leading to a 62-45 Purple win and a spot in the next round. And just like that, one team in Warren County remains in the men's tournament. Last night, the Greenwood Gators fell to Clinton County in the first round of region play. Greenwood was without the services yet again of Dawson Crump and Chris Agro for violation of school rules, and man, did they miss them. Clinton County held Greenwood to a 27.8 shooting clip in the game, leading the Bulldogs to a 50-42 win. Clinton County plays Russellville on Monday with a chance at the district championship game laying in the midst. So speaking of that championship game, here's what the men's fourth region looks like. On Monday, Bowling Green and Zion Harmon, whose story Zach Lee brought to you last week, will face Taven Lovin and Franklin Simpson at 6 in EA Diddle Arena. After the conclusion of that game, Clinton County and Russellville will face off. Winners of both those games will face each other Tuesday night in EA Diddle Arena, 7 o'clock. Now moving to the women, last Thursday, South Warren and Bowling Green faced off for the District 14th Championship. A tough battle for the Purples while the Spartans kept the lead for the entire game. Helping keep that lead, Spartans Jr. Sarah Dennison racked up a double-double with 15 points and 10 rebounds, while Purple's Keely Morrow tallied a game high of 17 points. However, that performance for Morrow wouldn't be strong enough to take the crown. South Warren went to win 54-48. to And with that loss under their belt, up next for the Lady Purples was the hardwood of EA Diddle Arena to face Monroe County on Sunday. The last matchup between the two earlier in the season came with a Purples victory, and that was last served to the Fal Lady Falcons. And not the hockey game. They made sure that that history wouldn't repeat itself. They took the lead early on and never let up. Bowling Green came within six in the third, but couldn't get any closer. Monroe County claimed Region 4, 62 to 46. And keeping it in Region 4, Lady Spartans squared off against Barron County on Monday. Trailing for most of the first half, the Lady Spartans were down by seven until a flick of the wrist and knocking down 11 straight. And a layup from Amaya Lashley gave the Spartans the lead and South Warren began to pull away in the second half. And at one point was even leading by 18. And with a lead like that, Lady Spartans claim a victory of 51 to 38. Now up next for South Warren, they are set to face Russell County tomorrow in the region semifinals. The last matchup between the two was a South Warren victory, but only one point, 35 to 34, with the Spartans going a 16-0 run in the fourth. This matchup will be the Spartans' fourth straight region semifinals, but they have yet to make it past the semis for a region championship. Tip-off is set for tomorrow night at 8. And as Will is more than likely to tell you, the Patriots were going for two, two, going for two in the Super Bowl. Now we take our shot. We're not going to blow a 25-point lead either, but we will show you our jaw-dropping play. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that?
good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Thanks for staying with us. Now it's that time of year again, a time where college football's best prospects try to make even more of an impression for the scouts. It's none other than NFL Combine time. As the NFL draft slowly approaches, two WKU players ha are having their names tossed around more and more. Forrest Lamp and Taewon Taylor made their trip up to Indy for the Combine's festivities starting today. Now Lamp will get his chance to prove his skills tomorrow, while Taylor will go on Saturday. And the last players to participate in the NFL Combine were Brandon Dowdy and Tyler Higby. Hey Karen, what comes up after basketball season? Spring training. You're wrong. It's NHL playoffs. Let's go ahead and head out to Buffalo at the first Niagara Center for a little bit of Predators hockey action. Predators would come down twice from a two-goal deficit this time. Two minutes to play in the third. Philip Forsberg, glove side high. That was pretty. He's a good, he's a good dude. I think he should have been captain. Overtime, 220 to play. Yet again, 4-4 tie. Forsberg's got a man trailing. Top cheddar, glove side high. Preds win. Making that last second playoff push, but Karen, that was pretty, but let's go for two. All right, Will. So I talk about it just a few seconds ago. We've got the NFL Combine coming up. Now, WKU has two players, mm -hmm. Taewon Taylor, Forrest Lamp. Tell me about Taylor. Uh, Taylor was a no-star recruit coming into college, which is really incredible. That also shows how far WKU athletics has come, especially football, going from no-star recruits to now they're competing for twos and threes. So that's really cool. However, when it can, uh, equates over to the NFL ranks, I like him. He's fast. He can play that so slot position very, very well. And he's got some quick feet, great hands. I like him. I'd take him if I were a coach. Right. His routes are really well. But one thing that we do notice, he is outstanding in mm -hmm. Conference USA. What does he look like in the big leagues? We saw him in Alabama, and that was a pretty big league team. What's it look like next? We, we both saw him in person in Alabama, and he had nine catches. But as I sit here and think, I'm like, where did those nine catches come from? The offense was abysmal in that game, except for when Alabama had their freshmen in. And even at that, it was outmatched. I don't know. I think he has the ability. He definitely has the speed and hands. We'll just have to see. But he's a top-end recruit, third round, second, maybe if he has a really good combine in the first round. All right, so next up, real quick, Forrest Lamp. Mm -hmm. Big guy. Great feet, great hand works, can bench press out of this world. I just, I really like him. I think he's got a lot to offer. People are saying to the Detroit Lions in the first round, they've got a high 20, mid 20 pick. I like that. Really good place. He can be a leader like he was on this Hilltopper squad. I like it. Well, I want to go back to that bench press because mm -hmm. today I was scrolling through Twitter, like I always do, and you can see that he is going for 34, 34 reps, mm -hmm. 225 pounds. Karen, I wouldn't be here. You probably wouldn't be here if you could rep that. That's really awesome. I'm really happy for him. We're going to have to wait and see after tomorrow. We'll see what happens. But, Will, that's all the time we have. Sad for us. We're done. As always, the extra point is up. And it's good. <laughs>